All right, kids, let me tell you a little story about back in the day, which happened to be a Thursday. Back then, before all this manual business, the wheelie was king. And all I wanted to do was be as cool as my brother, wheelie our entire street. Now, I learned pretty quickly what to do, but I also learned what not to do. And now, it's time for you to learn those things. You ready? All right, guys, uh, it's wheelie time. The wheelie is one of the coolest party tricks aside from the manual, obviously. But the great thing about the wheelie, in my opinion, is it's simple and it's actually fairly easy, but stay with me. You have to really break down what's happening. It's simple because all you need to do is find the balance point and stay at that balance point. Okay, great, thanks Rich, that's awesome input. Now, how do we do that? Well, first thing is find a location. Okay, find a good location. Uh, parking lot with a nice uphill slope, maybe even some grass. Put your flat pedals on probably because what you're gonna need to do is go past that balance point. So, what's the first step when we get those things in order? Well, the first step is you need to get the lift. Okay, and this is where a lot of people go wrong. They rely solely on legs, on power to make this happen. So what you're gonna need to do is find the right gear. And that's a gear that's not too hard, but not too easy. And just like in the lift video, you're gonna use the TRS standard. And that is close your elbow angle and use your torso. Your torso is very powerful. So if I fire my torso down, compress the suspension fork, and then shoot that thing back, that's gonna get the bike lift. Now I can add in just enough pedal power as needed for that given situation. So again, first thing, first step is that lift. So you wanna use your torso just like you're trying to lift up an obstacle on the trail. And what this is gonna do is, this is gonna help you shoot back and get to that balance point. Now what you're gonna to have to do is, you're gonna to have to go too far. In order to find out what that balance point is, you go past it a few times, and you'll start to get a little bit more comfortable with it. Once that happens, you're then gonna roll right in to step two. Step two, we're gonna label the fix. And nothing's broke. What you're doing is you're trying to fix as many elements in your body so there's nothing else to deal with besides keeping that balance point. So how do we do this? Well, we gotta kinda go back to step one. When you shoot your torso back, you wanna shoot your torso back pretty hard to get that bike up to the balance point. Now, your arms are straight. So in order to make that happen, your arms get straight. Here's the key, you ready? Listen to this, really pay attention. Keep your arms straight. The one single biggest issue I would argue is that people don't keep their arms straight. When you pull your arms in, that's where things get super difficult because then you have no control. You have this bike moving, your arms are moving, your torso's moving. What you wanna do is fire back, keep your arms straight. So think about it like this. When the bike comes back, my torso is gonna stay back with the bike, almost the same as if I was riding at flat ground. So when I shoot it back, my arms are straight. I wanna try to keep my arms straight. That'll help keep my hip crease fixed meaning if I look at it from the side, I'm not going like this. Okay, this is key. You really have to think about this because if you start to understand the dynamics and the physics involved, it makes perfect sense. Now, layer on top of this, we wanna keep the arms straight, I wanna keep my hip crease fixed, but I still need to stay relaxed. So this is where it gets a little difficult. You see some nuance start to creep in. So why are we doing that? Well, we're doing that because I'm already gonna answer the question you have in your mind right now. Well, Rich, Dude, I keep falling one side to the other, why is this? I would say part of it is because you get super stiff with your arms, with your torso, with everything. You have to stay relaxed. So if you get up, you pull the bike up, you find that balance point, and you're in line where you should be, good job so far. Now, if maybe a crosswind catches you or something like that, and the bike wants to lean one side to the other, if you stay relaxed, what you can do is, you can move your arms side to side. I wanna keep them straight, but I can let the bike move side to side. My hips are gonna dictate what happens, okay? I like to look to really, really deep thinking philosophers when I come back to riding the bike. And one of the best, she said it just so eloquently, and she said the hips don't lie, okay? Listen to Shakira, she knows what she's talking about. Okay, it starts with the hips. If the bike's leaning a little bit to the left, maybe I move my hip a little bit to the right. I can also throw my knee out a little bit as a rudder. I can use all these things, but I wanna be very subtle with those inputs. That, my friends, is step two. Okay, now, 
we have come to the final step, and that is step three. Step three, probably equally as important. Now, the reason it's equally important is, I think this is also a very common problem, and it's just below not keeping the arm straight. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question, and I want you to answer this. I want you to be honest with yourself, okay? You can lie to me, don't lie to yourself. Are you using pedal power to keep the front wheel up? Come on, are you? I think you might be. That's why you're watching this video. Don't use pedal power to keep the front up. Find the balance point. Once you find the balance point, it's just enough pedal input to maintain the bike at the balance point. This takes some time to understand and get comfortable with, but trust me, you want to really impress your friends, you want to pull that super cool wheelie all the way down the greenway or all the way down your street, this is what's going to help you do that. If you're trying to use all that pedal power to keep the front up, that's difficult. You're going to get tired, uh, you're not going to be able to sustain it for a long amount of time, and it's going to be a little bit more dangerous. What you want to do is, you want to be able to use just enough pedal input because then you're going to be able to control the speed. So hopefully this is making sense. Okay, these are all very important things. Now, we have one other element to add into this, and it's not any particular step, but it's something that is key to keeping you from flat backing it like a porpoise, and that is the index finger. Now you notice, I've gotten a little smarter. I have two index fingers up, because here in America, we're using this one, but everywhere else, you're using this one, I think. That's what I'm told. So either way, index finger on the rear brake. I always have my index finger on the rear brake because if anything goes wrong, I can just grab that rear brake and bring the front back down. Again, this is something that takes time. Okay, when you first start doing this, you're gonna grab a handful of rear brake and bam, the thing's gonna drop back down. As you get more comfortable, that brake input is gonna be very, very minor. And that's what's gonna help give you that subtle little bit, little bit of input to keep the stability. All right, at this point, we have gone through all three steps. Now. I think it's time to break it down and show you exactly how it's done. We're about to make film history right here on video. Are you ready? All right, so gear choice, about in the middle of the cassette, seat a little more than halfway up, okay? Now, step one, don't rely on the legs, torso. Okay, so I start open, arms are straight. Fire it forward, fire it back. Okay, see how it pops up? My arms, they're gonna lift it. So forward, back, okay, just like that. Little bit of pedal input, make sense? Now the whole time I have my right finger on that rear brake. So here we go, forward, back, okay? And so you can see I won't even give any pedal input once I'm up. So that just shows you it's all about this right here. Use your torso, step one. All right, starting to get a little more comfortable with step one. Step two, fix. Arm straight, hip crease fixed. So what that looks like is this. We pop it up, okay, arms are straight. So arms are straight, hip crease is fixed. So what I mean is this right here. I don't want that angle to change. Okay, so I'm staying relaxed. My arms are loose, but they're straight. And so I can start using that rudder. Okay, caught a little crosswind but I'm staying with it. Okay, arms straight, hip crease fixed, knees as rudders. All right, we got step one, fire back, get the lift. Step two, fix, arm straight. Step three is maintaining. So once I get it up, I'm rolling, everything's good. Just enough input to keep going. Okay, you'll notice I'm not relying on leg power. What I'm doing is giving just enough input to balance. Now, if my gear choice was wrong, or I start picking up speed a little bit, I can just shift gears. Okay, I made it a little bit harder. If I'm going downhill, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of speed. All these things, I have them in my control. Okay, arms are straight. Start to use those, those knees as rudders. Come a little bit closer if I want to. Woohoo! Just like that, okay, balance. Gotta find the balance point. That's the most important part. Find the balance point, just enough input to sustain. You're gonna get there, I know it, I can feel it. I can feel it in my plums.
a little experiment to show you that it's the balance point and not the pedal. So we're going downhill. I'm just going to try to coast with very little pedal input. So I'm hardly using the pedals. All I'm doing is modulating the rear brake. So what this is showing you is that it's the majority finding the balance point, not pedal power. All right, crew, there you have it. The wheelie broken down basically into three simple steps. Now there's some nuance on top of it, of course, but don't make it any harder than it needs to be. And don't lie to yourself, okay? The key is use your torso, not your legs to get the bike up into that balance point. And once you find that balance point, keep your arms straight and your legs are just sustaining. It's all about the balance point. It also takes time. Find a good spot. You know, find a nice parking lot with a slight uphill slope, maybe even a grass field. Go too far. You gotta pull the thing back hard to find out where that limit is and find that balance point. It's pretty simple. My hope is that you've already subscribed for all this cool content we're producing. If not, click below, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell to get notified because obviously we're bringing more stuff. Now on top of that, another great option is check out our Patreon. The content is ramping up. You're getting cool behind the scenes stuff there. We also have the opportunity for you to submit your wheelie video for me to analyze, break down, and give you feedback. And yes, on top of that, you can hook yourself up with a sweet RD hat or shirt. Click that link down below to check out the goods and stay tuned for a special limited edition monthly shirt coming at you. All right, I'm gonna head you off at the pass before you ask it. Now, yeah, I can wheelie anything and so can you. Hardtail, fully rigid, man, you name it. Doesn't matter what bike it is, I'm gonna wheelie it. So can you. That made sense. Remember the steps, have fun, go practice. Only thing left is, peace out dumpers. <laughs>